Hi guys, James here from Studio N8 and today I'm going to walk you through one of the mock-ups on the store and the majority of the mock-ups work in exactly the same way. So this guide is to give you an overview of how they all work. Um, so we're going to start with the bomber jacket mock-up. When you open up your file, you'll see that you've got the little welcome screen here. This gives you like a little bit of an overview of how to use the mock-up. Everything is very well organized and really, really simple to use. So if this is like your first time using Photoshop, you can crack this open and just let the file do all the work for you. You really don't need any experience at all. So over here, we've got this manual so we can hide that. That's a little one marked in red over on the layers panel. Um, and then you'll see that we've got the mock-up here. So we've got a folder here called front and you'll have other products with your download that also have you know, the back view and, and so on. So we can open this folder here and over here we've got the label and that's this section here. So we can have that on or off. So it depends whether you'd like that on or not. If we drop that down, you see we have the color. So we could set that to whatever color we like. And if you wanted to update the artwork on that, so let's change this to like a gray. And then you can double click the thumbnail to go into it and then change the color or drag and drop something on there to replace it. And then you'll see that updates in black. And we can close that down once we've finished. Um, the light, don't worry about the light. That's all with the textures and effects going on. So we can we can leave that. So we've got the top, top of the pile here. We've got the zip color. So if we click that, we can adjust the zip to whatever color you like. And then down here, we've got the design as well. So before I jump into those, I'm just gonna show you a couple more things that you can customize as well. So the collar color, if we double click that, thumbnail there we can change the color color to anything you like the same with the right cuff down here change that to white for example and then we can change the other one to white and then sleeves you can do those to any color you like so this is kind of looking more like a letterman jacket now so do that type of thing and then the waistband go around as well so we can make that white too if you just wanted to turn those features off you could just switch them off like that as well. So if you just wanted to switch that off and have the jacket entirely the same color, then you could do so like that. And you just drag and just move this around, slide the slider into the position of the color chart that you'd like to use, and you're good to go. If we are to go up to the design files now, so these ones marked in yellow are the ones we've just used and they are editable and adjustable ones so you can use sliders and so on or switch them on or off when they're marked in green they're smart objects so what you do with a smart object is you double click the thumbnail to go in and i'm just going to put a solid background on this just to show you what's going on so you can see that we've got some artwork files in here um, and that's if you want to design within the actual artboard itself you might just want to drag and drop some artwork in there that you already have that you've created in illustrator or whatever it is that you prefer to work in so yeah so you can just go and drag and drop your artwork into there i'm going to close this down now and then when you have finished adding your artwork you want to click save and then that will update the smart object which will be the chest area and if we were to go back into that i'll show you an example as well so if your design went across the entire front and I'll just toggle that on so you can see what I've put in there. So I'll just put design as a placeholder. And you'll see that that goes underneath the zip because obviously that's not a printable area, so that would go underneath that. So that gives you an idea of how that works. And then it's exactly the same thing for the sleeves. So if you double click, you can then go in and you can put any artwork in, just drag and drop it. And you know, I like to import stuff as shapes from Illustrator and it kind of works in the same way as vectors. You don't pixelate things. Um, it just retains its editability, which is quite nice. Um, so you can see that you've got all these anchor points just like you would in Illustrator. Close that down. And the same with the other sleeve. That's uh, exactly the same as the right sleeve. Once you've finished designing your garment and you're happy with it, you can then go down to the background. So you can have the shadows on or off. And you've got a little toggle there and you can have a textured background as well. You can have that on or off. Depends what you're after. Also, if you wanted to get something from Unsplash, you could. There's like some really, really nice ones in there. So you could, you could go and grab those. 
So as an example, what you could do is you could go to Unsplash and you could search shadows and you can find some really nice shadows here. So if we're to download one of these, and then if we add that to our artboard, adjust it to scale it to the right size. And we want to drag that up to the very top. Now you can see it's got these grainy things going on with the texture. Um, this is obviously shot on a on a wall, on like a concrete wall, so we don't want that. So what we want to do with this is we want to go up to the very top and click filter. And then if we want to go to blur, and then we want to go to surface blur. So if we crank the threshold up, that helps us smooth it out. So what else we can do is remove the, the gray tones as well in the white, so it's super clear. So not clicking on the thumbnail, if you click on the layer itself, you'll get these options come up. And then we can blend, we can change the blend if mode. So if we hold shift, it will break this up. If you hold it together, it drags the whole the whole thing, but that makes it quite rough. So if you drag that and then you just remove it, you can see immediately things are coming through. So that what that's doing is that's removing all the white. So we can really, really cut back on that. And then put that back halfway, click OK. And then if we set that to, let's go with linear burn. And then we'll bring the opacity down to, let's say 45. You get a nice, nice shadow overlay. So that's just something you could do, to push this mock up a little bit further if you really wanted. Um, you could change that to multiply as well. Maybe that is nicer. Um, totally depends on the preference. And sometimes that works in a different way with the color of the garment that you're doing. Very soon. So for example, if our garment was like a, a bright color, let's go with a bright orange. You see the, um, the multiply gives a different effect to linear burn. That gives a bit more of a, a neon feel. If you then wanted to do customize this a little bit further, you could then, like I say, you could turn the texture background on or off. In the same way that you put the shadows on the top as well, you could replace that um, with a slightly different texture. Maybe you could put like a marble surface on there, for example. And then down on the bottom layer, this is where you've got the color, and this is where you can change the background color to anything you like. So now you've finished customizing your garment, you're gonna to wanna to save it down. So there are various ways that you can save things, but I just thought I'd give you a little rundown of what I would do if I was using this for web or for Instagram. So if we go to file, um, you will have export options. So if you go export as, so this will bring out the export options. So at the moment you can see that it's a large document. So it's 5,000 pixels wide by 5,000 pixels high and it's at 300 DPI as well. So it's, a, it's quite large. So that would be fine for printing, but obviously you don't really want to be doing this for digital reasons. So um, what you could do and what I would do is I'd change this to 2000 by 2000. That will work well for Instagram. Um, the quality as well, although it's tempting to just whack it up to 100, that's just gonna end up getting compressed. So what we can do is we can bring that down to about 70. And then the by cubic, we can change that to nearest neighbor. And if you wanna put your copyright on there, you can. And then hit export and we are good to go. So I hope this gave you a good overview of how to use these mockups. Any questions, always there 24 seven. So feel free to reach out with any comments or questions. There's no stupid question at all. Anything is welcome. And if you have any requests for any specific mockup requirements, or if there's something for your store that you'd wanna get a mockup for, always feel free to drop us a line. We'll always take commissions for those. And if there are any requests to go onto the store, then they're always welcome to. Don't forget to use hashtag studio innate and tag studio innate as well with anything that you use creating these. You don't have to, but it's always lovely to see what you've cooked up using them. And um, we often reshare things that we really like as well. So I hope that was useful for you and any questions do let us know. Thanks for your time.